What's up you guys, Big Mets here, coming at you with another Training Tuesday. In this segment, we run through what my training looks like to be a professional triathlete. And the races are coming fast and furious. We, if you can believe it or not, we have another race week on tap this week. So it is Monday here and we are gearing up for the Huntington Olympic Distance Triathlon on Saturday. And so a little bit of a unique week um, and sort of just a general unique structure here uh, over the last couple weeks. So uh, I felt like after Bear Lake, uh, that race took a ton out of my legs. I was super sore for the majority of last week. So uh, we walked through my training there, sort of what it took to recover from a race like that and what training looks like as I'm getting back into it, uh, shifting into a totally different distance. And so everything last week went as planned. Um, I felt pretty trash for maybe four or five days. And then legs sort of uh, sort of came around when I did that hard run on Thursday, and then I surprised myself with a great bike ride and a run off the bike on Saturday. So I felt like things were definitely heading, and they are heading in the right direction to set me up for a, another good one on Saturday. And so, but that also means because it's different, the training this week's going to be different. So as I touched on, longer bike ride this morning, two and a half hours riding through the canyons, um, have a bit of a rest this afternoon, and then I'll just do a 3K uh, easy 45 minute swim, sort of just choice, get in there, flush it out. I'll probably throw on my uh, core shorts, which are sort of wetsuit uh, pants that help your legs float up, because my legs are definitely still a little bit tired, um, and this week's gonna hopefully get me nice and freshened up. So we gotta do workouts that are gonna elicit that rest and that, that pop to come through, but also make sure the body and the system's still chugging away and understanding that it's race week. So that's what today looks like. Tomorrow, I'll wake up and sort of do my normal Tuesday pre-race run. That's a 45 minute run, um, sort of undecided in terms of where I'm gonna do it. I might drive somewhere in Boulder and hit up something something else. I might just jog from the house and sort of hit up some trails that we've got out the, out the backyard. Um, but I'll do some little pre-race intervals. I think I've got some 60 second, just set a race pace on tap. That's pretty standard for everyone. Um, just sort of turn the legs over, try to feel good, and uh, yeah, not leave anything in that session. Just sort of get out there and get the thing done. Uh, I'll head from there over to the pool and sort of, uh, I don't know exactly how long I'm going to swim just yet. My coach will be on deck. I'm looking at my plan now. We have 90 minutes planned and that's standard for Tuesday, Thursday for us. Um, and it's sort of counterintuitive. You would think that in an Olympic distance prep, you would want to sort of shorten the load across the board. But for an Ironman and 70.3 guy like me, I think almost you go the other way because you want to make sure that the legs are turning over because it would be such a shock to the system for me to decrease my volume and intensity so significantly to the point where my body would say, hey, we're on a break or hey, we're gonna shut down. So I've actually got to keep the train rolling a bit here in the coming days. So I wouldn't be surprised if I swim five or 6,000 yards tomorrow after the run, I'll come home. And uh, yet yeah, uh, typically uh, Tuesday in a, in a race week would be, Tuesday or Wednesday would be a pretty hectic day because I, I do all three training sessions um, and I've got to pack all my stuff. So I'll, I'll come home from that, uh, the swim on Tuesday and then I'm gonna get on the bike and I've got a pretty easy ride on my road bike, I think I've got some sprints in there, nothing crazy again, just sort of turning the legs over. And then in the past, I've made the mistake of having that day before travel be an absolute disaster in terms of me trying to fit in three training sessions and also pack up my bike, pack up all my gear, think about my nutrition for the race. So I think a key tip for me to have a low stress pre-travel day is to get all that stuff done early in the week. So actually yesterday, Sunday, I packed my bike already, so it's in the bag ready to grab and go. Uh, this morning I wrote up my nutrition plan, so this afternoon I'll be able to pack that stuff up so it's all nice and tidy, ready to go. Um, stuff like my clothes and maybe toiletries and stuff, I'll wait until Tuesday just because I'm going to be wearing that stuff. Maybe we'll do some laundry, this and that, just basics. And also my electronics because I'm using that stuff all the time. Um, those are sort of last minute items, but the bike for me takes forever because that's a pretty intensive process of cleaning and packing and making sure everything's nice and um, good in the bag. So that... I did all that already, so that's gonna make Tuesday be a little bit less stressful, I think, and then I'll come back from that bike ride, tidy up the last minute items, and then I've got a massage that night. Um, I try and get a massage with my massage therapist sort of as late as possible before I travel, so I'm flying out on Wednesday morning, and so as late as I could get on Tuesday night, I'll do that, and so, for example, if I was flying out later in the week, I would sort of push it as late as possible because I, I just really think that that is helpful sort of on race week, and so, Wednesday sort of marked as a travel day. Um, it's actually pretty significant travel to get there. I'm gonna fly from Denver to Detroit, rent a car and then drive two and a half hours down to Fort Wayne where I'm gonna stay. And the race is about 30 minutes south of Fort Wayne. So 
Um, it's gonna take up most of the day, particularly with a two hour loss of time difference there, but really kind of uh, those in the past have really stressed me out and said, oh man, like I gotta, this is gonna be such a, a, a a draining day in terms of me just being on my feet and traveling and being in new places and being in an airport particularly with COVID can be stressful um, and I think one thing that I continuously remind myself is those days are they're gonna be what they're gonna be and I've done so much international travel in my day that even though seemingly on paper it seems like it's gonna take the whole day it's definitely not like flying to China or Dubai or Brazil or something like that so we'll get through it uh, we'll probably land I think we land about 3 p.m. Um, Eastern time and then by the time we get the car and drive down there should be around dinner time and then um, I'll do a 20 minute shakeout jog upon arrival so that'll be the more or less the first thing that I do I won't worry about building my bike we'll stop at the grocery store and uh, thankfully I've got my wife and my mom flying in to help come support the race and that's definitely a privilege so I'll kind of put my mom on uh, on dinner duty I'll head out for a jog probably do some rolling and some stretching just make sure everything's open from the travel and sitting in my sitting in the car and in the on the plane all day and so those are that's kind of a key thing for me to just get the blood the blood moving after a long day of sort of just sitting there and so that's what uh, that's what Wednesday's looking like Thursday morning I'll wake up and I've already scoped out a awesome 50 meter aquatic facility that I'm looking forward to popping into. So I think, you know, some of that is based on what the hours of wherever you're going are. So this just happens to be open six to 10. So sort of wake up, grab some breakfast, head over there, knock out about an hour swim, and then come back and worry about putting the bike together. So I'll probably get nice and caffeinated, find a nice coffee shop, head home, build up the bike, make sure that's all good to go. And then my plan for the afternoon is to head out to the course and I'm gonna ride, thankfully this one, it's only 25 miles, so I'm gonna to plan to ride the entire thing. When I'm doing a 70.3, it's 56 miles, and very rarely will I ride 56 miles when I arrive on race week, unless I get there super early. So in the 72 hours before the race, there's no way you're gonna you're gonna ride that much. So I'm gonna head out there, I'm gonna ride the entire course, that's gonna be, um, yeah, I'm gonna be really pumped to be able to see all of, all of it. Um, I've got some intervals to do, just pretty hard ones actually, just make sure everything's firing and feeling good, but, uh, looking forward to getting down there because it is at sea level and the majority of this year I've been training in Colorado at altitude so that's going to feel hopefully really good. That is what Thursday looks like. No run for that uh, for that day which is again a little bit abnormal but sort of just trust the coach in this in this taper and in this prep and um, yeah know that a day off off on the run there is going to be good. And then Friday standard pre-race that's a it doesn't matter sort of what distance I was doing if I was doing a half if I was doing a sprint Olympic Ironman it would look kind of the same. 40 minute um, ride, 15, 10 to 15 minute run, sort of based off feel, both with some a little short little micro intervals in there. And then in the afternoon, I'll try and get in the open water and do a swim. If it's too much of a hassle for me to drive all the way back to the race venue, I might pop into that pool if it's good and cheap and it does the job. I'm not super stressed about getting in my wetsuit um, because I actually did a wetsuit swim yesterday. So I think the common theme here on race week is for you to set yourself up and for me to set myself up to be as least stressed as possible. And it's not always easy because it requires a lot of planning and thinking ahead. Thankfully, I've done this so many times that it's sort of a second nature for me to scope out the pool and know when to pack my bike and know what training sessions to do and know exactly what I have to bring. Um, but for the beginners out there, I think the key is to, number one, establish what your training plan is gonna be for the week and then work backwards from a plan um, in terms of when you're gonna maybe build your bike, when you're gonna head to the pool, scope that out, know where the grocery stores are, if you're gonna need to get any bike equipment, um, scope out where the bike shop is or where the race venue is gonna be to, sco to scoop that stuff up. And I think it just comes down to planning. And um, when I'm a little bit out of practice myself, considering this is the first race that I've flown to in seven months. So, um, you know, you kind of get back in the groove and it feels like second nature a bit once you get once you get back into it, this week has felt good, kind of getting ready to fly and get ready to go do another race. Um, but yeah, I think the key is to just plan and, and make sure that you can eliminate the headaches if possible. So um, yeah, we left off on Friday. Saturday is the race itself. Again, Olympic distance. Key for me on Saturday is going to be a big warm up. Um, I'm going to try and do as much, at least 10 to 15 minutes of running with some intervals. I'll try and get in the water as much as possible. And then uh, the race itself is probably going to be somewhere between an hour and 40 minutes and an hour and 50 minutes. So pretty full gas compared to the three hours 45 that we did in Bear Lake. Um, the intensity is going to be way higher and the demand and the competition is going to be fierce and hot. So 
That is Saturday and Sunday's a travel day, so might do a little bit of something, sort of just a choice day. It depends on how sore I am too. If I wake up and I'm feeling absolutely wrecked, definitely will not run. Um, preferably we'll do a swim, so if I can get back to Boulder after traveling and pop into the pool, that's gonna be probably what I reach for, but if it's not feasible, then I'll maybe just do a little easy spin. Um, and I might even take a day off and just go for a walk with the dog. So <laughs> that's, that's typically uh, what we do after the race. And so, yeah, that's another taper week for me, what I do leading into an Olympic. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to throwing down on Saturday with the boys and uh, pretty strong women's field out there as well with my wife racing and uh, a bunch of other top-notch females. So looking forward to it. Stay tuned to the PTO page. Stay tuned to my Instagram. And uh, yeah, if you can hit the like, like and subscribe, that is massive for me. We're trying to blow up this YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, it's just been really fun to sort of dive in and give you guys an inside look at what it takes to be me and uh and also hopefully i can pass along some tips to all you guys so um we'll catch you on the other side we'll see you next week and uh not really sure what training plan is gonna look like after this race uh we'll dive in and figure out what that is uh after this but uh yeah all all i set on saturday so we're gonna give it full gas all right take care guys